So this is Uri Madu, Songs of the Planet Walkers by Jennifer Boys. And this is a, a chapter called The Lahar. Frozen snow blasted against Andal's waterproof jacket, congealing in the fur-lined edge of her hood. Tired from the long ascent, she paused and gazed upward at the looming conical summit, held fast in its carapace of ice and snow. The thin plume of vapour they had noted when the climb began was invisible now from the mountain's flank. Sunset glints dulled as they watched, fading into deep blue shadows. A slight tremor jutted Andal's legs. In the distance, the ongoing crash and crumple of an avalanche. Snow and ice crunched underfoot as Andal resumed her climb. Step by step, Kobar led them upward along a snaking ridgeline, and in the lee of a curving outcrop, they pitched camp. Gradually, the tent warmed, but as the rock beneath them groaned and shuddered, the team huddled in their bedrolls, unable to sleep. Can you do your assessment now, said Car and Andal. Casco's voice was hushed, as if any sound might wake the slumbering, slumbering peak. I don't like the sound of that. Or the feel, Lind added. Andal nodded and pushed herself upright. With a little further preparation, she began to push her senses downward beneath layers of pumice and ash sandwiched between contorted beds of solidified lava. As she probed more deeply, she discovered a volcanic chamber with welling magma on the rise. Heat shimmered through her senses. Molten rock roiled and popped. Her mind tasted sulphur and the chemical signature of carbon dioxide. Water was rapidly boiling off, leaving the chamber in a plume of superheated steam. The eruption would be explosive and peripheral vents were already heating. When she returned to herself, three sets of eyes fixed on hers. We have to leave here soon, she said. Ideally, tomorrow, or perhaps early the next day, but I see no reason to delay. Casco, we're too tired tonight, but in the morning we should link to examine the mountains around us. Ponds may be forming in the ice. You and I are strongest in far sight, and together we can achieve this more quickly. So, it's imminent then? I think so. Andal shrugged self-consciously, aware of the inadequacy of her reply. Volcanoes are like the breath of a planet, she said. The only rules they follow are their own. However, where, whether the volcano blows or not, the ice above us may be ready to slump, so I suggest we leave as soon as our survey is complete. We should try to sleep. Lind, we'll need a high energy breakfast in the morning, please. The wiry Lathian seemed on the verge of a retort, but Casco silenced her with a look and said, High energy breakfast it is. He hesitated, as if trying to frame his words, then asked, Lady Andal, you're Trianogi, and your house is often gifted with foresight. Is this true of you? Can you see a safe path? Lies and illusions, Lind growled, superstition and a glib tongue. Trianogi can no more see the future than I can. That's not true, Andal replied. The insult made her voice sharp. My mother is a gifted foreteller, but she can't choose what she sees, only as the breath allows. Convenient. Lind, that's enough. Why do you dislike me so? Andal cried. I've done nothing to you. We're all tired, Lady Andal, Casco said. He opened his palms. If you do see something, would you please let us know? Of course, she answered, proud of the steady calm she projected once more. But on the inside, 
Her heart still beat high in her chest. She took steady breaths and hoped her hands would stop shaking before they noticed. Casco glared at Lind. You and Cobar take down the tent after breakfast. Be ready to leave as soon as we've done with the survey. Cobar nodded and without a word rolled over and returned to sleep. Casco and Lind soon followed suit, but Andal stayed wide awake, listening to the mountain for a long into the night. Her hand strayed to her brother's gift, and when at last she dreamed, it was of a strange mishmash of fiery rings and a baby, her baby, hidden and crying in the darkness. Um, so thank you for listening, and that was a chapter from my book, Uru Madu, Songs of the Planet Walkers. And I'm very excited to share it with you. Um, if you like what you heard, uh, you can go to my website, www.jenniferboys.com. Or you can Google Uru Madu. It's got an apostrophe in it. You'll see that on the cover. Um, please buy my book, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.